In this video, we will explore how we can use the OpenAI Assistant API to leverage the multimodal capabilities by taking a text, an image as an input, and then uh, producing the output. We are also going to gauge the quality of these responses. We're going to put Omni to the test by assigning a role to it as a medical diagnosis professional. And we're going to test if it's able to detect brain hemorrhage in an image. Before I dive into the conceptual framework as well as the code, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you get notified every time I drop a new video about Python coding, OpenAI assistance, as well as AI in general. If you are a business and you want an expert team to develop an AI application for you on top of the GPT-4 Omni, make sure you book a 45-minute discovery call and we'll scope out a game plan for you. OpenAI just recently launched their fastest and most affordable flagship model, the GPT-4 Omni, which is multimodal, and it's currently dominating the LM model leaderboard by surpassing all the commonly used benchmarks to uh, evaluate a model. We're going to test the GPT-4 Omni model with vision multimodal capabilities. The first place that I want you to look at is the API reference. If you haven't bookmarked this, I recommend highly to do so. Bookmark this. It's easier to find all the functions here and the models. Uh, so you can just pick and choose exactly what you need for your use case. So we're going to go to API reference and then we're going to scroll down to where it says assistance. You're going to click the section where it says create messages. And now you'll notice that you can actually assign a role in your message and then you can also assign content in your message. The roles can be user and assistant. Now, when you're sending off an image to the assistant, you want to set the role as the user and the content will be image. We also want to send text, so we're going to send this off as a list. So it's going to contain not only the text content, but it's also going to contain the image file object. So if you go under image file, you can now specify the ID of that image. So what that means, we have to create a file with that image. I'm going to test out JPEG and PNG, but uh, essentially you're going to create the files here and then retrieve that file when you're sending off that message to the assistant. You might be already familiar with the assistant framework. Uh, we're going to use the same framework as before, create the assistant, create the thread, and then on the message body, we're just going to send off the image. Everything else is the same. Uh, and we can set off the streaming capabilities as well. That's going to be in the run function. Keep in mind the image input would only work on the vision capable models. For OpenAI, that would be GPT-4 Omni as well as the GPT-4 Turbo, which both has vision capabilities. And when you're creating the file, you can use either one of these models. We're going to write up the code in a little bit, but I wanted to show you conceptually how this is going to work. So we have the assistant. This assistant can be anything. It could be a medical diagnosis expert. It could take CT scans through vision and then, then spit out a response. So we'll just assign the prompt and the knowledge base in the assistant. And then we are going to then create a thread, right? And then we're going to create the file. Now you can create the file ahead of time if you want to repurpose the file for other use cases. But if you're just using it for a, a specific message, you create the file before you send the message. And then when you're sending the message, you basically insert this file as a image along with your text and then you're going to get the assistance response. It's really simple, but it's really important how you implement this into practice because there's a lot of avenues you can take this. We're gonna go ahead and install the OpenAI package in our Google Collaborative Notebook. I'm also gonna link up the notebook in the description so you can play around with it. You can adapt it to your needs, use it as boilerplate code, or even use the LM models to create something on top of this. I'm gonna import all these functions. Also make sure you have your OpenAI API key available and plugged in under the secret section. We're now going to use the OpenAI function provided by OpenAI to authenticate our client object. Now with our client object, we have access to all these functions and models that OpenAI has provided us under API reference. We're also going to import the event handler, which is provided by OpenAI to handle the streaming capabilities. If you go under the API reference and click on models, you'll notice you can also list the models that you have available under your account. I know OpenAI is slowly rolling out the actual the GPT-4 Omni APIs to uh, to the users, so you might not get access. So you might want to check first if you have access to the model. So we use something we we'll call client models .list. This is the function to uh, this is going to be the function to uh, list the models that you have available under your account. These are all the models. Now let's just display it in a nice fashion. Just we're just going to loop through all the models. Okay, so these are all the models that you have available in your account. Let me see if I have GPT Omni. Yeah, I have GPT-4 Omni right here. Once you've confirmed you have access to the Omni model, we're going to start creating our assistant. We're going to start with a simple example. I have a couple of files in my local directory that are basically images. Uh, I have this image of somebody wearing sunglasses. Basically, you want Omni to recognize what kind of sunglasses they are and where can I buy it in the US. So notice when I'm creating the assistant, I have the model as GPT-4 Omni. 
So let's go run this. Following the assistant framework, then I'm going to create the thread message. It's going to be an empty thread in this case, and then we're going to append messages on top of it. On step four, we're going to upload our files. I'm going to use Google Collaboratory's upload feature to upload the file from my local directory. And then I'm going to use the OpenAI's files.create feature to create the file for uh, uh, the assistant to use. If you go back to the API reference under files, you'll notice you have the files.create function. And for that function, parameter is file, of the file object, of course, and then you have something called a purpose. And in the purpose, you can use assistance for assistance. And this could be any file like document, PDF, uh, something like that. And you can use vision for assistant image inputs. So we're going to use vision. As you can see, we use the purpose vision. We're not going to choose our file. We'll just upload the image of the man wearing sunglasses. And you'll notice we have a file ID right now after the file has been created on the OpenAI servers. Step five, we're going to send our message with the image to the assistant. So we're going to use the threads.message create function to create that message. And then and under the content section, we're going to send off not just the text, but also the image. So as you can see, we're sending off text and the text is where can I buy these glasses? Okay, the type is text and the actual text is where can I buy these glasses and the type here is image file and then for the image file I'm going to plug in the file ID I've got from uploading the uh, image to OpenAI servers so then we're going to run this and the last step is streaming the assistance response we're going to use the event handler function to now stream the response let's go ahead and see what it says it's working as you can see, it understood the image. The sunglass in the image appears to be classic style, similar to Ray-Ban, Wayfarers. Here are some stores in the USA where you can buy these items. This is great. This shows that the model has multimodal capabilities. It can process image. It's supposed to also process videos as specific frames of the image. OpenAI hasn't provided functions yet to process the audio, but if you still want to use the voice capabilities, you can use the TTS and the Whisper model to create layers around the uh, GPT-4 Omni uh, model. It should still reduce the latency of the responses. In this case, it was very fast. We're gonna try a couple of other images. GPT-4 Omni understands emotions. So I have a picture, it looks like Obama is crying and it's a PNG file. So we're gonna upload this image and see if uh, Omni can recognize the emotion in this image. Let's go upload this file. Obama successfully uploaded that file. We're gonna take that file ID, paste it here. Now, of course, when, of course, now when you build, of course, when you build out an end-to-end -end, uh, solution, you're going to be wrapping all this into a function so that you, you don't have to manually input all the file names, etc. And if you want to learn more about how you can create assistance, make sure you join my school community where I teach you Python. We do agent building workshops. So we also have cheat sheets, deployment frameworks that you could use uh, for your needs. All right, so let's go ahead and ask a question. Explain the emotion of this. Well, explain this image and tell me what emotion is the character successfully the next step is streaming the assistant's response let's go see what the assistant says the image depicts barack obama the 44th president of the united states wiping his face with a handkerchief it appears to be an emotionally charged moment possibly uh, one where he's feeling moved or reflective the emotion conveyed seems to be one of sadness nostalgia or deep emotional impact this could be this could be interpreted from the following visual cues tears facial expression contextual clues the details are absolutely amazing I mean, um, this model could train you to be the next Sherlock Holmes. You know, it's just remarkable. And when you're trying to build applications on top of this, think about the implication. You could do data analysis. You could do medical diagnosis. Uh, I have an image of a brain hemorrhage. I'm going to just plug in this image and see if Omni can recognize this as a brain hemorrhage. Okay, so we're going to save this. We'll call it test, All right? We'll go ahead and upload the file as you are an expert medical diagnosis professional and make sure we're using the same file i also want to point out when you're attaching the image file to the message um, you can also specify the detail that you want to use it could be low or high by using low you can use fewer tokens and if you want to use a high resolution you can use high tokens so this is something you can take into consideration if you want to manage your cost so this ran successfully let's see if the assistant is able to detect the brain hemorrhage as an expert in medical diagnosis, let us analyze the provided image of CT scans. The scan shows traverse sections of the brain at the same level, typically used to diagnose various intracranial conditions. Well, I'm not an expert, but 
It sounds just as good as any medical expert. The CT scan shows a distinct hyperdense lesion appearing white. Conclusion, this CT scan shows an intracranial hyperdose lesion likely representing either uh, intercerebral hemorrhage. I can't even pronounce these words, but check this out. It successfully detected a hemorrhage. And I, I did not provide any kind of message other than the image itself. So this is great. But the cool thing with the agent framework is that you can now expand this by attaching a knowledge base where it can pull expert medical information. It can also uh, leverage something called threads, which is a collection of messages. Think about this. If you want to make a product with this, uh, you create a seamless user experience where the user comes in, puts in their information and, and stores all the user's conversation under the thread. So user can come back at a later time and the assistant or agent could retrieve all their previous messages to give them the preferred uh, recommendation. The agent could work alongside medical doctors to keep track of the user's profile, progress, and diagnosis, etc. So in the assistant version 2, OpenAI has also introduced capabilities to attach vector stores and databases to your assistant, as well as expiration policies and auto truncation of the thread messages. What that means in non-technical terms is that OpenAI basically does all the management behind the scenes to make sure that the content is efficient, that you're able to manage your cost effectively because at the end of the day, the more content you use or the more, more tokens you use, you're going to incur more costs. So OpenAI has introduced a lot of these automatic cost management techniques behind the hood so you don't have to worry about that. I'm going to leave a link to this notebook in my school community, Python for Assistant Agents. You'll find it under Resource Hub. Uh, I also include other resources uh, like deployment frameworks as well as OpenAI integration guides. and. Uh, Make sure you check it out. You'll also have a chance to interact with the community, earn points, and get access to Python Accelerator workshops and additional bonuses. Until next time, this is Imtiaz, your top partner to build, deploy, and sell AI agents.